Welcome to the third module in the uh, Environmental Geography course. This uh, module is titled The Dynamic Geosphere and Plate Te Tectonics. I'm Nathan Bowden, your instructor for this course. In this module you will learn the origins of pl plate tectonic theory, how scientists developed it and further tested it, the driving mechanism for geosphere movements and how plate tectonics work, how continents have split apart, moved and reassembled, how earth systems interactions at plate boundaries are related to earthquakes, volcanoes, mountains and ocean basins, as well as how tectonic processes affect people by creating both natural hazards and vital natural resources. Continental drift. What is continental drift? Uh, in the early evidence in the 16th century, uh, they, s they noticed that uh, the continents seemed to link together. So uh, Africa and South America seemed to fit like two puzzle pieces. Coal deposits and other strata, which are the layers of the geosphere on these separate continents have similar fossils, such as the fossil here on the right-hand side, the Glossopteris, which is found in the southern continents, that is uh, South America and Africa, uh, and so they possibly formed one supercontinent at one time, which they uh, named Gondwanaland. And the suggestion that the modern-day continents uh, now separated were joined in Earth's past. So at this time we have seven continents and the suggestion is that um, many years ago, and we'll see soon how many years ago, all of these continents were together in one supercontinent. The original hypothesis of, the, of continental drift was proposed by Alfred Wegener. He was the first to formulate a detailed global explanation how these uh, different continents uh, and their present shapes fit together and he laid the groundwork for theory on plate tectonics although at this time he did not come up with the idea of plate tectonics he came up with the idea that continents drifted so Wagner's evidence was he saw these different continents and they would fit together as puzzle pieces you see this on the figure on the right hand side the different continents Africa, South America, Antarctica, Australia, and India, that these uh, fit neatly together to one continent. Um, he noticed that widely separated, separated but very similar sequences of sedimentary rocks containing the same fossils. Here we see the different types of fossils, the uh, fossil of the land reptile, which matched across Africa and South America, the fossil of the Glossopteris fern throughout uh, the different continents, etc. He also noticed that glacial deposits appeared in, uh, appeared in Antarctica and these were associated with ice flows which create land ridges radiating out from a central point. Lastly, ages of rocks similar uh, or similar uh, on mountain belts uh, on different continents. So at a, a certain uh, rock and the Indian continent or subcontinent matched with the corresponding uh, mountain rocks in Africa. He called this supercontinent Pangaea. Pangaea is Greek for all land and you see on the figure on the right, the very top, Pangaea uh, collisions would have combined these continents together into one giant landmass approximately 250 million years ago and then it slowly began to drift apart. Uh, continents positioned on, on top of tectonic plates split and moved into present, uh, present positions today. Notice that at approximately 150 million years ago, as shown in the figure on the right hand side, you see the southern continent of Gondwanaland. A few points about Alfred Wegener. His arguments for continental drift were at his in his lifetime seen as a failure because he did not have a 
viable mechanism for how the continents moved. He saw that the continents moved, but had no clear, clear idea supported for this movement. He did have an, a theory that uh, the tidal forces generated by the Earth's spin would have pulled the uh, pulled the continents apart, but uh, basic physics uh, say that this is, of course, impossible. And while his continental drift idea was a failure at the time and uh, and even ridiculed by a scientific community, his uh, idea was uh, uh, considered later to be one of the uh, most important in the idea of how the dynamic Earth worked. So how do we go about explaining how the uh, continents drifted apart? This theory is uh, the theory of plate tectonics. One initial clue on plate tectonics was the moving of the North Pole. The, the North Pole, as shown in the figure on the right, has been wandering or moving around for uh, hundreds of millions of years. And on the right-hand side, you see, you see the path that, is, that the North Pole has taken in the last 500 million years. And uh, explorations began as to understand how these uh, northern poles, the North Pole, could have, been, could have wandered so much. Uh, and ideas came about sea, for, sea floor spreading. Uh, the bottom of the oceans were moving. They looked at the magnetic stripes. When sonar was developed, they could measure the magnetism of the ocean floor. And also earthquakes, uh, how the theory on how they came about supported this idea of plate tectonics. So the ocean floor uh, was mapped and uh, as you see in this figure, uh, so after World War II uh, they were mapped for um, possibly, uh, partially because of the advent of, of uh, large-scale production of submarines, they began to map the bottom of the ocean floor. And notice that these oceans had uh, ridges, which are underground water, uh, sorry, underground, uh, underwater mountains, and very deep trenches. A computer-generated map um, of the East Pacific Ridge, here on the right hand in the, in the smaller uh, B, part B of the, of the figure, shows the uh, difference in elevations on an East Pacific rise the red being the highest elevation and the blue being the lowest. So how did these come about? We see now these ridges um, acro across the ocean floor. Um, and so uh, uh, Harry Hess from Princeton University described in his book History of the Ocean Basins in 1962 the idea of uh, continental drift his explanation of continental drift. He, uh, he recognized that this mechanism of uh, continents being separated through the ocean crusts uh, either sinking or, and drifting apart at the trenches. He also uh, uh, noticed that the mid-ocean ridges uh, where a new oceanic crust forms as the lithosphere, which is the upper part of the mantle, uh, goes upward and the mantle wells up, cools, solidifies, and uh, separates. Volcanoes and a central rift valley are common among these fast spreading ridges. Uh, a very good example of this is the Mid Atlantic Ridge. So again, as I mentioned, the sonar was developed and uh, m magnetic maps of the ocean floor could be made and this happened in 1963 uh, when uh, Vine and Matthews, two geophysicists from Cambridge, um, went about uh, mapping uh, the Earth's magnetic field on the ocean floor. They were, as you see in the figure on the right, uh, they went around in a boat with a, uh, with a sonar device. Uh, they dragged it uh, slowly across the ocean floor and measured the magnetic fields. 
Additional data from magnetic mapping uh, helped unravel the mystery of how these fake plates were moved. Uh, because they noticed that the magnetic field stripes are arranged symmetrically about the center of the mid-ocean ridges. So how do they match it up? Well, firstly, they did analysis of the well-dated rocks on land. Uh, here is an example of a 5 million old basalt flow on Kauai, which is a Hawaiian island. That's shown in figure A below. So they measured every single layer uh, along this 5 million, uh, 5 million uh, layers, 5 million year old layer, and, and looked at the magnetic polarity reversals. So one layer would be positive, the next would be reversed, and then normal, and then reversed, and then normal and reversed. So they could tell when the reversal in the, in the crust happened and match that to the ridges that they uh, were measuring at the bottom of the ocean. The timing and duration of these reversals were then correlated along the seafloor. So basically what they did was they uh, looked at the layers in Kauai, correlated that magnetic reversal and normal along the, uh, the layers, so using it as a ruler, and used this ruler uh, along these mid-ocean ridges to figure out how old these uh, ridges were. The age of the seafloor, here you see on the left-hand side uh, a figure of the different ages of the, of the seafloor, red being the, uh, the youngest and blue being the oldest. And as you notice, there is, there is a symmetry to the magnetic signature on the seafloor, which is also similar to this signature with respect to volcanic rocks on the seafloor. Again, red being uh, the newest, where the 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 new uh, the new mantle is peeking through the crust of the lithosphere, and the uh, colder colored regions, blue, uh, are the older areas. Earthquakes. Earthquakes are another uh, test of plate tectonics because as you see here on the left hand side um, the mid Atlantic ridges, well they they produce land and these uh, these these two plates diverge from each other it causes a friction um, along the default line, it doesn't happen uh, nowhere, it does not happen uniform along the ridge certain parts of the ridge will be slightly more active than other parts of the ridge and will grow at, at different rates. Earthquakes happen because these uh, different growth uh, growth rates along the mid-ocean ridge and it, it uh, develops a tension along the ridge. Eventually, um, in 1965, a seismologist named of, uh, of Wilson I had the idea of this lateral sliding, so this, this tension developed across the mid-ocean ridge, and at certain times, it the tension breaks, and the the ridges move quickly laterally along each other, creating transform faults. And this l quick lateral uh, transformation, this quick lateral movement, uh, creates earthquakes. In modern tectonics, we have identified uh, many plates uh, along uh, the surface of the Earth, and these plates move very slowly, so um, only a few centimeters per year, which is approximately uh, the speed at which your fingernails grow. An example of, um, of a divergent uh, ridge, a diver two divergent plates creating a a rift is is shown here in Africa. Um, the upswelling of the asthenosphere is um, asthenosphere as part of the mantle peeking through the lithosphere will thin the lithosphere. It will basically heat it up uh, through through pressure, but also just through heat. It will thin and separate. And this you see on the 
right hand side on the map uh, the diversion of the Arabian and African plates uh, along the Red Sea but also again between the two African plates uh, along the East African Rift Valley and these two African plates are the Somalian and the Nubian plate. So basically uh, Africa is splitting apart in the same way that Pangaea split apart uh, as stated by Wegener and this, uh, this splitting did happen about 250 million years ago. Continental splits, how does that happen? Well as I, I quickly mentioned but now I will go into more detail the rifting starts when the hot asthenosphere, part of the mantle, uh, begins to rise. Uh, the upwelling in the asthenosphere heats and weakens the crust, resulting in a thinning uh, of the lithosphere, and also it's called normal faulting, the creating of a rift valley. Crustal extensions proceeds as the uh, as the asthenosphere continues to uh, peak upwards, it eventually splits apart and the continents migrate away from each other as the mantle upwelling continues and oceanic crust forms where the continents once joined. Divergent plate boundaries um, can also, this is a, this can happen on the seafloor as well as on land in Africa, it's uh, in the, the eastern rift valley of Africa, it's happening on land. But of course, it can also happen, as you see here on the left-hand side, under uh, underwater, and these uh, these form a very mineral-rich hot uh, hot spring waters uh, and hydrothermal vents, which are also called uh, black smokers, because of the rich amount of uh, nutrients coming upward. As you remember, the mantle has significantly higher concentrations of certain elements such as iron and nickel, uh, and these uh, give it these black smokers their black color. Not all uh, continents uh, are divergent. They are not drift. Not all continents are drifting from each other. Far from it. Uh, many plates are convergent, which means they are approaching each other. Uh, here we have a figure of uh, a, a, a. On the left, you see a divergent plate boundary, that is saying that the rising asthenosphere is causing uh, plate B in this picture to move away from plate A. So A and B are diverting. diverting. However, as plate B diverts from A, it approaches uh, plate C, and this is a convergent plate boundary. Convergent plate boundaries are when these two plates move toward each other, and they can be uh, between two oceanic plates, an oceanic plate and a continental plate, as shown here in figure 318 at the bottom, or between two continental plates. The Himalayas is an example of two continental plates which are converting or convergence and which they form the Himalayas of the largest, uh, tallest mountains on the planet. So where these uh, continents converge, neither of them uh, is dense enough to sink into the mantle, so they, uh, they form a suture zone. When they meet together in these plates, the Indian and Eurasian plates, they, uh, they form, and it's through this great uh, suture zone collision, the world's highest mountains. Thrust faults are um, beyond the mountains where the, uh, the crustal shortening areas converge on, a, on their boundary. So the land boundary of the two plates is the uh, uh, thrust fault. The mountains happen where the one plate subducts under the other plate under great pressure. An oceanic, two oceanic plates that are meeting and uh, converting. An example of this is the Aleutian Trench in Alaska. Um, as you see in, 
in figure A on the left, at the top, these two uh, plates meeting together, the one being the North American plate to the north and the Pacific plate to the south. Along this um, plate there are many uh, earthquakes uh, and uh, also a few volcanoes which uh, create, uh, uh, create islands. And, all, and most of these earthquakes happen under, underground, very deep under the uh, surface, the ocean floor. Strike slip faults happen uh, when two uh, plates are neither diverging or converging, rather they are, um, they are running past each other, parallel to each other. And the most common of these faults is a strike slip fault. Here we have a picture on the very right hand side, uh, a, a famous uh, strike slip fault, uh, the San Andreas Fault in the uh, west coast of uh, North America. It's called the San Andreas Fault. And uh, uh, you see a picture of a farm where the fence has, uh, has, has been slightly repaired due to a uh, uh, an instance where these two lands, these two plate, the lands on top of the two plates uh, are moving parallel to each other, one heading northward, the other one heading southward. Uh, this uh, certainly came uh, at, at, in one big, um, one, one big movement called a earthquake. And at this time, the earth moves uh, approximately, I see, about two meters. So as I mentioned, uh, the San Andreas Fault is one of these slip plates. And uh, this movement, photo, uh, the photo here showing it, is the Great San Francisco Earthquake of 1906. We can also see these uh, uh, slip plates along the San Andreas Fault on the left uh, figure, a photo of rivers that have uh, drastically been uh, moved because of these plates moving against each other. And also, uh, these can be filled up uh, with water and lakes, uh, linear lakes can uh, form. As I mentioned, plate tectonics uh, and earthquakes are very uh, deeply related. The distribution of earthquakes is a good guide to, uh, to showing where the state these plate tectonic boundaries are. On the left-hand side, you see uh, you see the distribution of earthquakes uh, along uh, the the Earth, and most of these earthquakes occur along the convergent and transform plate boundaries. And uh, the most devastating of these being in the Pacific Ocean Rim. Offshore earthquakes uh, can often displace ocean waters and uh, these generate seismic sea waves, also called tsunamis. Um, a very tragic incident that happened in 2004, a very tragic tsunami in Indonesia that killed um, approximately 250,000 people. Tsunami is, uh, is uh, Japanese for harbor wave, as a one student of mine uh, mentioned to me. Plate tectonics and volcanoes, as I mentioned, uh, here on the left you see a picture of Mount Pinatubo, um, uh, which is a volcano in the Pacific Rim, rim. And where these earthquakes happen, where these plates are, uh, volcanoes are often uh, surely to come about. Plate tectonics, uh, such, as the Him uh, such as the Himalayas, also build mountains. Here's the a photo of the Chugach Mountains. These, this mountain building can happen in several forms. The first is accretion. The uh, Chugach Mountains in Alaska are, are, are an example of accretion, which is the off-scraping of uh, seafloor sediments against an overriding plate of convergent margin, producing mountains. Compression at convergent plate boundaries, uh, just through the fear, the, the, the sheer physical um, compression mountains can form. Uh, the collision of uh, continents uh, as the one continent goes above another continent is a third way in which mountains are formed. 
And lastly, uh, the magmatic processes help form large mountains. Uh, and these large mountain ranges can be shown on the oceanic plates converging and subducting beneath a continental margin. These uh, plates have, have negative consequences, as I mentioned, uh, tsunamis, earthquakes, and volcanoes can be quite dis dis disruptive, but they also have positive, uh, have positive impacts on our uh, other Earth systems. Uh, on the left-hand side, uh, the, the Andes Mountains were formed by uh, these, um, this continental movement. The Andes uh, Mountains uh, stop the flow of warmer, uh, uh, warmer, warmer air, which condenses along the mountain ridge and falls uh, as, as rain. This rain is, uh, can be used for, to great effect for agriculture. And on the right-hand side, we see the Bingham Canyon copper mine in Utah, which happened because of a subduction-related volcano. Again, as I mentioned, these volcanoes bring very rich minerals to the surface from the, from the mantle. And some of these minerals uh, include such metals as, as copper. In summary, what have we learned? First, that persistent research, the applications of new technology, and the synthesis of diverse obs observations over more than three generations of scientists have concluded in our 20th century and now 21st century developed theories of plate tectonics. Earth's rigid lithosphere is broken into pieces called tectonic plates, so this hard rigid lithosphere of the crust is floating uh, on a softer uh, mantle, and these pieces are called tectonic plates. These plates move apart. Uh, we have divergent boundaries which create new seafloor um, or rifting on land. These plates can come together, uh, forming convergent boundaries. Convergent boundaries also often uh, involve volcanic mountains or major earthquakes. Alternatively, these plates can slide horizontally past each other, uh, forming transform faults, slip faults, which again also uh, create earthquakes. Plates, and lastly, plates localize volcanic and seismic activity, and plate motion influences the biosphere, as shown by the Andes Mountains uh, of, uh, green growth, the climate, as the atmosphere moves across the mountains, the water, uh, the vapor condenses and rains, and of course the availability of natural resources such as copper. Thank you for listening to this third module. If you are finished, you may continue to the next module.